News in the world of Bell Wright. Have you been wondering what's been happening behind the scenes in Carvinia? Let me tell you, a complete absolute freaking ton of a lot has been going on. Let's look first at one of the really major changes and then I'll hit the highlights of more. One of the main new changes in Bellbright is that they have a new game feature called a prosperity system. And as you can see, it affects the entire map. It's pretty much a full overhaul to how villages interact with each other. They say this next update will introduce a dynamic environment where safety and control of areas around the map will provide direct benefits to the neighboring towns. And they've added a few bonuses as well to the upkeep and management of these towns through this system. Part of that is going to be through the village improvements. And is it just me or does this map look bigger? Have they added more area? I'm going to have to get in game and see. Prosperity affects many aspects of the town, including villagers increasing their population size and having better traits. Militia being recruited as temporary mercenaries because each team will be able to develop its own militia as well once it's liberated. Way more complex than what we have right now with people walking around with hoes. New town improvements with unique effects and new trading options, depending on the nearby bandit threat. They've made a lot of upgrades to the UI and given us a lot more information about how we can interact with towns. So like here on the screen for Herndine, you can see that it's liberated, you can see what prosperity level it's at, what villagers are available for hire, which ones you've already hired, what improvements you've built, built there. This one has the bell tower and an archery range. The archery range and the training buildings that you can put up at villages are now going to have more impact as well. For example, if you build a village archery range at a liberated village, then you'll get more archers to spawn in that village for hiring. You can see what all militia types is currently in the village and payments can be made for upkeep with prosperity or with coins. If an event's happening or you're doing something nearby the village, you can raise the militia to come and help you and release them while they're gone. And while you have them raised, you can interact with them just like you do with your villagers, including upgrading their gear and weapons and things like that. And you still have normal village trading going on as well. Well, I say normal, they've made changes to trading as well. So adding something like an archery range will increase the prosperity of that village, but it's also going to add five archers as potentials for the militia for that village. We can see at tier three, we have the archery range, barracks, granary, village training grounds, I'm going to have to jump into the preview branch and see the details of this as it seems to be getting closer to release. When we look at our maps now, we can change what overlay we have. We can have normal one. This is a threat overlay. You can also look specifically at villages. It shows you what level of hostility the brigands are at currently, and this will grow over time. Of course, that's going to be leading to raids and such. It gives you a lot more information about the different areas of the map and what's going on right there, including the history, because it's good to know how many camps have been cleared, how much bandit activity is going on, because the safety of the territory is important and any nearby enemies will contribute to the overall threat level of the adjacent villages. The more you protect the villages by keeping all the encampments cleared out, then the more your prosperity grows and gives you more benefits down the line. So the bandits and brigands will migrate around the map in different areas depending on what's going on there, like how much you've cleared out the encampments. And if you or the militia don't keep them at bay, then they can get bigger and bigger and stronger encampments going. They've made a little video about the prosperity system. Let's look at it together. Hello everyone, Nisper here, and I bet you're all wondering what's going on with the next big update to Bellrite. But we wanted to show you just one of the new features called the Village Prosperity System. We've done pretty much a total overhaul of how you liberate a village and then manage it afterward. Now, 
Whenever it comes to building a village improvement, it will have specific things that it improves within that location. Here, for instance, you have the village archery range, which will add five archers to the militia of that village when built. You can see all this information on our new UI pen, which is accessible on the world map by looking at that specific village. Here you can see all the villagers for hire, you can see all the militia that are able to be recruited using both gold and prosperity. Or you can of course trade with the town like you could before. The militia acquired will then go around the territory of that town, trying to take care of any enemy bandits or other brigands that might- Did you see that? They're over here on the left. Look, that's the village militia right there trying to take out these bandits that were walking down the road around their village. And they're not just like pitchforks getting people when they walk in the village. They're like going around trying to take them out. They have their own separate color down here on the map too. They're green dots on the, on the mini map. The militia acquired will then go around the territory of that town, trying to take care of any enemy bandits or other brigands that might be nearby. Lastly, we want to just quickly show you some of the new information that you can see on the world map, particularly when it- Did you see him change? He put his mouse up here and changed the overlay. So this is what it looks like when it's on village. You can see on the world map. Particularly and now he's when on it threat. comes to other threatening entities within your territory. These numbers will become more and more important as the game goes on, because encroaching bandits will then threaten these cities, which may affect the overall prosperity level of your kingdom. This next update is going to be one of the biggest ones we've done since we launched into Early Access. Seriously. We're currently working on a preview build, but hopefully we'll have something more for you very, very soon. Until then, please keep in mind that we are working very hard behind the scenes and we've got tons of new features that are going to be in this next big update. So when taking a look at this footage, We're gonna make look sure at you some look around them. for any new easter eggs or cool things that might have changed since the last update, and we'll make sure we get it out to you as soon as we possibly can. Until next time. Happy gaming. <laughs> Okay, so massive update incoming. I cannot cover every single thing that they've already shown is going to be in this update. I'm going to hit the highlights. I'm going to actually make a post that you can go and read a list of the things that we know of so far. And this isn't even all of it. And it's so long. I can't. The, the video would be an hour long. So one of the devs made a post on Discord in the kind of private preview changelog update room saying the specific things that they're working on and testing right now. If you're interested in joining the preview branch, I made a video on how to do that a while back and I'll link that in the corner above. So we have the prosperity level of villages. Threat levels in regions, reworked bandit migration, ability to hire militia from liberated villages, and lots of quality of life changes. Here's a few that I think are going to be really popular and I'm excited about. We know after liberation, the village gains a prosperity bar and unlocks a stronger militia that patrols against the bandits and occasionally aids the player. Prosperity grows with village improvements and clearing threats, but it declines if those threats go unchecked. So there's this whole other overlay level to what's going on in the game now. So each region now has a dynamic threat level that's influenced by bandit camps, patrols, threat in adjacent regions, affecting the patrol difficulty and how migration works. Camps now send migration parties to nearby areas when the threat is high enough and they form stronger camps as prosperity rises, while migration frequency decreases as regions become populated with camps. The militia in neutral villages can now be temporarily called to arms. They can be strengthened, upgraded, and will start sending out their own patrols when their numbers are large enough. They've added various buildable decorations for player settlements, added a river dock building to tier two, that allows for fast travel with your NPCs. 
You heard me right. Fast traveling your troops around the map. That's everybody's dream in Belright. One of the most popular one is going to be added the ability to relocate structures without losing resources. There's no way you're going to move a tier 2 or definitely a tier 3 building if you have to knock that down, lose all those resources, and try to go somewhere else. So now you can remove the build parts and take it somewhere else. You have the ability now to switch where your main settlement is, which is also genius. So if you want new people to be hired and go directly to your T3 settlement, if you want deliveries done there, you can set that up. Of course, new POIs, they've added 20 new quests. Make companions self-bandage when their HP is below a threshold set in squad settings. So no more walking around with band-aids, putting it on their bobo every time they're hurt. They can put their own band-aid on. The new village barracks structure that you can add to villages spawns heavy infantry militia in the villages for recruitment. The archery range, we said spawns archers and the training ground spawns light infantry militia. When your villagers are walking around and they get attacked by someone or something, they'll call nearby allies for help to come and fight them off. You can now build your own dirt roads around your villages and plan your villages out that way. And you and your villagers will be able to walk faster on your own man-made roads as well. Here's an example of some of the player-made roads in a village. This is from Xenomorph in the Discord. They've made adjustments to running, climbing, animations for fighting. They've made a lot of improvements to the map screen. They added a new feature for item and building finder that now creates a temporary on-screen marker and highlights icons on the map, as well as directly in the game to easily point out things like certain types of structures. They have the new overlay system for maps displaying different kinds of information. You can copy settings from structures between different settlements now. They added the function for displaying overhead icons and interaction dots on demand by holding left alt. So you don't have to go into someone's menu every single time to see information. They've added book merchants to the remaining villages. Tons and tons of optimizations and little improvements. Oh, also, while you're building a structure, you can go ahead and set the settings on it while it's being built instead of having to wait for it to be finished before you can say what you want done there. So I have to wait and go back. Like as soon as it's built, it'll start working and they'll know what to do there. I'm going to make a post and I'll link it in the pinned comment below where you can like read through all of this if you want. Because like I said, it's too much to include in one video. I'll be looking at this a lot closer and jumping into the preview branch, testing things out. Let me know what you think. Is what you were hoping for here? Is there something else that you want to see? There's going to be so much to do in this new update. I may need some help with this. <laughs> if you're interested in becoming a member of the Happy Gamers community, you can join with the link below here on YouTube or join through Patreon and come play on our Happy Gamer servers. Leave a like if you found this useful. Until next time, happy gaming.